it's time we talk about poke interactors. Now, poke interactors are actually kind of new from when I last covered this subject, so let's see what they can do. Hopping right into this one, let's start by making an XR poke interactor. And so we can do that by going into our origin. I'm going to start off with the left controller. I'm just gonna create a empty object. I'm gonna name this poke interactor. And you just add component XR poke interactor. And yeah, actually, shockingly, that's all you need to do for this one. So the interesting thing about the Poke Interactor is the fact that it doesn't use anything like a box collider as a trigger like all our other reactors used to use or still use. See, this one uses a sphere collider and set to is trigger. And so you can kind of see the range in which you'll interact with things when you're using the direct interactor. But with the Poke Interactor, it just works out of the box just with this script. Some of the attributes I want to point out to you, we have an interaction layer mask, of course. We also have the interaction manager, which will automatically be filled when the scene starts up. We have an attached transform, which is very important for this one. So it will generate its own if we don't assign it one, but we want to assign it because otherwise it will be just kind of generating from where it is, which is kind of at the zero, zero spot. And at, we kind of want it to be on something like an index finger. So we can change that in the future. So instead of having a sphere collide or anything, it actually uses all of these attributes right here to determine if a poke is happening and can change its depth in which it would consider a poke is happening, its width. It has different things for both hover and select. And so it's, it's a very unique interaction you have with objects in which the hover is the first thing that will trigger when you touch an object and then the select will happen when you're halfway through. And I'll show you that in a moment. And I would honestly say the biggest and most important ones in this component are the require poke filter and the enable UI interaction. So this poke filter or poke interactor can actually interact with UI objects. I, I will say out of everything, felt the most right for this specific use case. Now, the first thing I want to do is make sure that this is using the right attached transform. So in order to do that, we kind of are in a pickle. So if you'll remember, the XR controller generates our hand, and then this needs the index finger of our hand. And luckily, if I type in left, you'll find the left hand prefab. This is actually already divided up into a bunch of different sections, and you'll see this is expanded out the index finger. And at the very tip, we already have a spot that we'd want to use. And so when it animates, it will move with the finger as well. So we want to use this and then somehow attach it to our poke interactor. Sadly, I couldn't think of anything else to do. So I made a script and this is the script I made right here. It's called set poke to finger attach point. Now there is nothing crazy going on in here. I keep it very simple. We have a transform that we need to fill in the Unity editor. This is gonna be where we determine to attach for our poke interactor. And then we need the XR poke interactor on our object or our parent object. And so what happens when the hand gets generated, it actually has two parents, and then you can get the component in the children, which is gonna be the XR poke interactor. And so if I minimize this, let me explain what's going on here. All right, we are looking for the poke interactor here, correct? And so when the hand is generated, if I press the play button, you'll see that this, this is where our script is. And so this is its parent and we have to go to one parent above that. And then it'll go down to the child object and grab this poke interactor. And then we can assign it and you can see it's actually working. So let me get back to the script, keep explaining it. So yeah, that's all this code does. It will go into the parent of the parent, grab the XR poke interactor, and then it will call set poke attach point. And in here, it'll just make sure both those things aren't set to null. And then it assigns it. That's really it. If you would just like to download this code and not have to type it out yourself, you can find it on my Patreon. I would love your support. But let's get back to the poke interactor. So just for good practice, I'm going to quickly do the same thing for the right hand controller. So I'm going to come up here. All right. And then I just need to make sure I make it a poke interactor. That's good there. And then I just need to make sure I go into the right hand prefab. And then I need to make sure it has the same script give it the right attach point, which is gonna be this middle finger. Oh, not middle finger, what am I talking about? Index finger. And that should work. Now, just so I don't have giant rays shooting everywhere, I'm gonna go ahead and turn these off. 
And then we now have two things that can poke and interact with things, but we have nothing to poke. But that's why I have this guy right here. So what this is is just a simple cube, and I have it called poke interactable, but it doesn't have anything on it to make it a poke interactable. So I'm going to fix that. Now, the easiest way to demonstrate what a poke interactable can do is by making a simple interactable. So what a simple interactable does is it just determines if something is interacting with it, and then we can change up some things like do interactable events. Also, to make it a poke interactable, if you remember on these, oop, oop, oop. If you remember on these poke interactors, right here it says require poke filter. Since I'm going to leave that to true, it's not going to react unless it has a poke filter. So let's add one. XR poke filter. And there it is. This is the poke filter. And poke filters are actually kind of interesting. What they do is they determine how we are going to interact with this cube here. So right now it is set to Z, but I'm going to set it to negative Y. So what this means is once our finger is going downwards relative to the cube itself in a negative from a positive to negative position that will allow us to go from hover and then select with the poke interactable same thing is if i set it to y that would just mean if i was using the finger to go up through the cube then it would go to hover and then the select and so to demonstrate this i'm actually going to add some things for the simple interactable i'm going to change these events and i'm going to have it change the color of this and it's going to go from green for when nothing's interacting with it to blue when it's hovering and then finally yellow when it's being selected by the poke interactor i'm just going to speed through that right now yeah again all i've done here is when it goes hover entered it will turn it blue when it goes and hover exits it will change it back to green when it goes is select entered it will change it to yellow and again change it back to green once it exits. And that's it. So let's start up the scene and see what's going on. We can see that when I put the finger through, it turns blue and about halfway through, it turns yellow, meaning it's selected. If I go from the bottom, it doesn't work or the right or the left, only negative Y. And again, it selects when it's about into the center of the object. So yeah, that's how it works. Now, besides poking interactable objects, the other very useful thing it can do is work with UI. And you'll see I've already created one here. I'm just going to activate it. And there's nothing crazy. All right, this is it's just a simple UI and it has a slider on it and a button. Besides that, I haven't changed anything else. And so right out of the box, it can just work with this UI. So let me start up the scene and show you again. You see, I can slide this left and right using my finger, which is very cool. And then if I click the button, it clicks. And I will say out of everything, this felt like the right way to use the poke interactor. Using it on objects and not having any physics interactions with it was just a bit weird to me. So right now, I think this poke interactor actually works best when it's working with UI. And in terms of interacting with objects, objects or creating buttons. I just don't know if it's the right tool for that. I know Valum made a button with it and his works very well. I mean, everything he does is amazing. But for myself, I want it to be more of a physics interaction. So I'm going to be coming out with another button video in the future in which I fix all the broken things that I had in my previous one. My dearest Patreon subscribers, I cannot do this without you. Thank you for making this a sustainable part of my life. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.